I'm barely in the chair. I almost ran into cameraman dad. It's, it's that kind of Thursday. It's that kind of Thursday. <laughs> How? I gotta say, now that Halloween is over, I just have to say one thing. Uh, can y'all please, like, I did, can you teach the kids when they come to get the candy to at least say trick or treat? <laughs> You know, it used to be everybody was excited about getting dressed and you, you know, it's, it's like, this is like a contract. The kids come, they're excited and they go, trick or treat! And then part of the contract for me goes, I'm supposed to go, oh, and who are you, little princess? <laughs> who are, you know, it's like, that's the way it's supposed to work. It's a back and forth. And when they come and go, trick or treat, uh, and I'm supposed to go, oh, you scared me! <laughs> that's the way it worked. These kids was coming to the door and, uh -oh. <laughs> Hands out, just putting the bag out, and I'm like, but you, I can't do anything until do you do your part first. <laughs> so I was trying to, I was like, oh, you are, you are a scary man. And it was like, do you have any candy? <laughs> so I'm, I'm you, you know, so I'm like, it's the trick or treat. That's the part of the contract. That's the way it go. Oh, and then it's another thing. Can, can y'all get a proper trick or treat bag? <laughs> These kids, like for the most part, everybody had the bag, but one girl came, this girl had to be about 16. She had her violin case. <laughs> and I said, where am I supposed to put the candy? She was like, hold on. And she pushed the violin to the side. And I'm like, well, I don't want to scratch up your wood on the thing. And I'm just like, get a bag. People was coming with their school backpacks. You know how, you know how big a backpack is? for candy. I mean, it was just like then the people had their hands out. One child came with a rolling suitcase and was unzipping <laughs> it. I said, where is he going? So I'm telling you, yeah, just, you know, I, I guess I gotta start bringing, the, having the bags with the candy right. to give it to him. And then at, uh, at one point, I, and then one of the little girls, like, you also, you, you gotta be, I know there's, there's some candy that is just like, the, it, that's the yucky candy. I always give out the candy bars and stuff that I, I would wanna um, eat to the kids, but the one little girl, she said, I don't eat those kind of candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now I'm standing here. I got these daggone Beyonce boots. My feet hurt too, little girl. Okay. <laughs> so I'm digging around and I said, well, that's all I got. And she goes, it's a bag behind you. Check that bag. <laughs> and I said, you know what? This little girl might be president one day and I want <laughs> to make sure I have my social security checks coming. So I went and opened up the other bag and came back. She got me together. I gave her the candy she wanted. <laughs> did. But I do want to say, I do want to thank the little girl. I, I did run out of candy. I bought 20 bags this uh, Halloween and ran out of candy in an hour. Um, number one, because my son, every pretty girl that came by, he went and met them halfway down the block <laughs> with a bag of candy. And I, and I told Jeffrey, I said, Jeffrey, we got a, we got a, uh, not mortgage, we got a, like, ration. ration. Yes. Look, uh, welcome 56. <laughs> we got a ration, the candy I saw, people only get two. I looked up at him, it was a bunch of teenage girls. He giving them handfuls <laughs> of candy. And I said, you setting us, you setting yourself up, Jeffrey. So he's giving out all the candy. So I ran out of candy and the kids were so disappointed. But one little girl, she came back and she said, here you go, ma'am, and handed me a bunch of candy. And when I tell you, me and my assistant, Edie was like, I think I'm gonna start crying right now. <laughs> like it touched me so much 
Because that's how traumatized these kids had me on Halloween. It touched me so much uh, that I got emotional, too. Uh, so it, whoever did that had, you know, you, you trained your little girl to just give, and it should be given to you, and all of that, all of the sayings. That was really sweet thing to do. Here you go, miss. But that's my public service announcement. I'm sticking by. I can't wait till next year. I'm going to have 50 bags. Y'all not going to do me. I'm going to be ready for you. <laughs> So now Halloween is over. Mariah Carey is wasting no time jumping right into Christmas. You... Oh, that's one, your sister, boy. She put it out there as soon as the clock struck midnight on November 1st. Mariah Carey had a message for us. Take a look. <laughs> to start Christmas, and I absolutely agree with that. But not for Mariah Carey. <laughs> not for Mariah. You know, I am expecting Mariah to do something. And Mariah has grossed more than $70 million from her Christmas song, OK? So if I was Mariah, I would never take my tree down. <laughs> if I was Mariah, every time I left the house, I'd be like, Alexa, play my song over and over and over. <laughs> Till I get back home. I'm telling you, I would be sleeping with my Christmas song on a loop. So for the rest of us, though, it is not time for Christmas yet. I feel like for the rest of us, can y'all just give us some time to carve the turkeys up yet? <laughs> like, it's just, it, it's, we already got through the stress of Halloween and picking out costumes and buying candy and doing the pump. We put them, I got to find out if I can return them pumpkins back to Target. I just. <laughs> Like, I haven't even picked out the stuff I'm supposed to be cooking for Thanksgiving. Now I got to talk about giving out parties and making the list and who getting the, the, this gift and that. Santa ain't even up yet, OK? <laughs> the thing about in the holiday decorations, I'm like, oh, you know, because you're supposed to put up the holiday decorations early because you want people to see them. But my problem is once I put them up, they're not coming down. They're not coming down. If I like that tree, because I like to put the lights around the tree, that tree is lit up for the entire year. It just, for me, I'm like, it'll help you get home at night. You know, it, <laughs> we see my tree lit up. <laughs> see, because when you're little, you don't think about how much work it takes to put that stuff up and bring, bring it down. But when you're a single mom, you got to get on a ladder. You put those lights up. You got to get those lights done. And the whole time, you're trying to hold on to the ladder because you don't want to fall off the ladder. And so I, I'm just, like, stressing. I uh, got a gingerbread house the, two years ago. OK, but look at my gingerbread house. The roof didn't caved in. <laughs> everything, all the stuff didn't falling off the roof. But that gingerbread house is still sitting in my window welcoming people. <laughs> A year later, I'm telling everything that fall off, all the little white stuff that fell off, the door fell off, the names that come off, the, it said, from the shepherds. I don't even know what that little sign is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But, you know, so I'm excited about Mariah. She takes my stress away. And uh, Mariah is starting a 16-show tour, y'all. 16 shows. But guess who's the opening act? DJ Sus One. Congratulations, sus. Thank you. You know, Mariah's family, so you gotta go represent. Okay, well, I know you're going on a 16th city tour with your family, but you you do remember, or you, you got family waiting for you. We, yeah, yes. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll be right back. We, we waiting with our arms open, sus. Cougars don't snatch them up on the road. You know, sus love the cougars. The cougars love sus They one. love sus one. And ever since I said sus one got good credit, cougar and good credit go together. <laughs> My, my, my nightmare, sometimes I wake up in a sweat and I'm like, is this the day Mariah gonna say, sus, I need you, like, all the time, and sus gonna just, like, leave and be with Mariah? I'll be right back. You gonna, are you... I love Sherry's family. You'll be right back? Mariah's family and Sherry's family, we all one big family, I'll be right back. You said we all one big family, I'll be... That's what my first ex-husband said to me, I'll be right back. <laughs> so you might understand if that's a trigger right there, sus. No, <laughs> 
I love you, sister. We happy for you, too. We are happy. Now, as uh, Mariah has told us, the holidays are coming up. A lot of us are going to be reaching for the cakes, the pies, the sweets. You get the itis, uh, you know. But we, we also have to make sure that we are aware of what we're putting in our bodies. And uh, I did press yesterday to bring awareness for National Diabetes Month, which is started November 1st. And, you know, this, this right here, black and brown people have double the diabetes rates as white people. Every 23 seconds, someone is diagnosed with diabetes. I'm one of those people that was, I'm, I'm a diabetic, I've been a diabetic since 2007. And I wanted to get the word out to go get checked out because diabetes is called the silent killer. You don't realize that things are wrong inside your body until you feel the external stuff of your toes are tingling, your fingers are tingling, you're using the bathroom all the time, your vision is starting to get blurry. And that's when you recognize the signs. But when that happens, it's usually a lot of internal damage that has been done to your kidneys, your heart, all your organs. So in our community, they would always call diabetes the sugar. And I don't like that term because the sugar makes you think it's kind of a cutesy term and it's a funny term, but diabetes is not, it's not funny because it so affects so many people. And I tell people all the time, diabetes is not a death sentence at all. A lot of people get scared when they get that diagnosis of diabetes because you don't know where to start, what to do, but there's so much information out there. It is, it, it, diabetes has saved my life because it has made me get healthy, it's made me look at labels and what I'm putting into my body. And I also say, if you have children, please get your health together so you can be around to take care of your children, your nieces, your nephews. I am so about, we all have a purpose and it's, you can't fulfill your purpose if your health is not together. That is a big thing and you have legacy. There is always somebody depending on you to fulfill your purpose because it'll help them fulfill their purpose and so on and so on. And so, you know, we have to, we really have to be mindful of our health. And I say, put the sugar down, sugar, put the sugar, I don't wanna preach, but put the sugar down, go get checked. So at least if you know you can do something about it and you can, you can start this journey of health. It's good over here on the other side, and I have diabetes. So that's said in love on National Diabetes Awareness Month. Um, and I gotta say, I the, one of the things I love about doing this show is it excites me because I never know who is watching the Sherry Show. So y'all, guess who watched our show the other day? Ooh. So many people. Lenny Kravitz <laughs> watched the show. Oh my gosh. When I tell you, so Lenny saw my reaction to his music video for TK421, and he posted a video of him watching me <laughs> when I was talking about it. And I love this because it, I meant every word that I said. Take a look. Lenny Kravitz just released his new music video. It features Lenny Kravitz dancing around with no clothes on. Lenny Kravitz, at 59 years old, he is my golden bachelor, this one right here. He covered his manly parts with four fingers. <laughs> that is Lenny, 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 and Lenny. And he was smoking that cigarette. I don't like smoking, I don't even smoke, but I would love to be your nicotine. He, Lenny said he wasn't smoking a cigarette. And so, Lenny, why don't you come on the show and explain the video to me of what you was smoking? I need clarification. I mean, I literally, I'm looking at Lenny. Did you see how Lenny, when I say he's my golden bachelor, Lenny gripped his heart like that? Let me tell you something. I know that's code for something. I know it's code for something. I don't know, I don't know what the code is, but I'm gonna figure it out. And, and I saw Lenny's video and I just, I freaked out. I sent it to all my friends. You know what we started doing? I started scribbling my name. I was like, Sherry Kravitz. Sherry, <laughs> Sherry with the S, get a K. I would've said that Lenny, if I had known you was gonna be watching, I would've made my own video to send to you. I would've done my own video. So this is what I say, ladies. This is, ladies, I say this all the time. Shoot your shot because you don't know. You, you never know who's to watch it. And she, may, Lenny Kravitz might be watching right now. And if he did, if he is, hey, Mr. Kravitz. 
And another thing, I'll see you at Zoe's wedding, Mr. Kravitz. And Zoe, I can't wait to see you from your mother. <laughs> Did I go too far? Did I go too far, John? I, I don't want to too far. You could be our stepmom. I, I could work be with that, that bonus mama, yes. too. Oh, man. <laughs> So y'all, Sierra and Russell Wilson, they're expecting baby number four. And when I tell you, Miss Sierra is about to pop at any minute, but this is not stopping this girl, Sierra, from showing off her dance moves. So she posted up dancing to Tyler's hit song, Water. Look at that, look at Sierra, look at that booty. Look at that booty. See, every time Sierra gets pregnant, her booty just gets bigger and bigger. I'm telling you, if I had a booty like that, I'd be doing the same doggone thing. <laughs> Every time Sierra dances, her booty grows. I love it. And you know, I know Russell is looking at that video going, can my wife get pregnant while she's pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> that video right there. I need to make one of them kind of videos for Lenny. That's what I'm gonna make this show. <laughs> Did I go too far? Uh -huh. Did I go too far? All right, all keep right. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> Sierra, congratulations. You and Russell on your growing family. We can't wait till this baby comes. <laughs> and Missy Elliott celebrated her birthday in a very special way. She decided to give back. We love Missy Elliott, yeah. And so last year, Missy's hometown of Portsmouth, Virginia declared her birthday Missy Elliott Day. So, yes. <laughs> We love super duper fly. So this year, Missy returned with the check. She paid the past due rent for 26 families. And she did. And Missy Elliott said that this was the best way to commemorate Missy Elliott Day. And Missy says that, uh, you, she says, you give because you remember the days when you did not have. That's what she said, and she gave back. And I thought about that, and I said, you, so that's what you gotta be careful when people be naming streets after you. Yeah. You gotta yes. go back and pay to... It. But you want your street in a good neighborhood. Sometimes you get a street name, <laughs> and it's in a rough neighborhood. When it's in the good neighborhood, that's something to celebrate, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know, and, and here's the, and I know it's some people in my family, they see that check, that, that's Missy Elliott Day. That's... <laughs> We, oh my God! We're gonna so work we, on the Sherry Shepherd Day somewhere. We're gonna work on the Sherry Shepherd Day somewhere. Yes. Okay. Well, work on. I will, and I will happily pay a, the 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 rent when I get that raised. But <laughs> it's, it's a contract here. But y'all, hey, Missy Elliott, we love you so much. Happy Missy Elliott Day. <laughs> and y'all, we have a great show for you today because later on, Ophira Eisenberg is in my lab lab. We'll be right back. My first guest has had an incredible 50-year career in Hollywood, but my love for him went to the next level when he surprised me during an appearance on Good Day New York last year. Take a look. No, Do we want to date anybody? I want to date someone. Like, Henry Winkler is my, that's my jam right I know, there. but I think he's Good. taken. Is he? Wait a second. Oh, Wait. my God! <laughs> This is She wants to date you, aren't you, Harry? This is happening right here. Are you married? Where are you going to be? See, this is what I said about Henry. Like, I like Henry's speed. I don't have to worry about Henry showing up in court with a bunch of kids and, and, we're, and we're fighting all the time. <laughs> like, we're going to go to Italy and chill out with a nice glass of wine. That's uh, what I like. I have the tickets. There, see, there you go. <laughs> Today! He is here to share stories from his new memoir, Being Henry, The Fonz and Beyond. Please welcome Henry Winkler. <laughs> You said 
said you were gonna come and you did. Thank you so much. They're all so colorful. I know. Color makes us feel bright and it just puts really, you in a mood. What a good looking audience. I know. And we're, we're it's so excited to have you here. I wanna say happy birthday. You turned 78 years old you Monday. You had to say that. Cause you look good. Let me tell you something. 78 years old, you look amazing and you still got that Not joy. like Lenny. Not <laughs> No, I, 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 I have to say I tried that pose in the, in, in the uh, dressing room <laughs> and I never put on my pants so fast in my life. <laughs> I looked over at a mirror and I went, wow, that's not cool. That's, that's terrible. You know who loves, your wife loves it. That's all you gotta wear. And see, I had to come off of you, Henry, and get to Lenny, cause Lenny is like, he's single. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, go, I go where the single. No, but you didn't know what he was smoking. I was just gonna say, you could say, Lenny, I'm your rolling paper. Oh! Henry, Henry Winkler. You are bad, you are bad. I was only helping. All right, well, I'm, Lenny, I'll be your rolling paper. That's... <laughs> you know, I love so much about you, and I know just every time I meet you, uh, I just get such a joy. Because, you know, one of the things I love is you're a family man, Henry. You talk about this in your book. You got six grandchildren. Yes. Six I, like, I love all of them. Yet you love all your great. There's not one that gives you a problem. Not just, one. I'm... Well, they, they give me a problem, but I just love them. We have three children, yes. most of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you got the six grandchildren, you love them all. Yeah. You tell me what you're like as a grandpa. What am I like? I am, uh, uh, Papa, I, I'm feeling like Chicken McNuggets. Yes. Of course. <laughs> Can I have a McFlurry? Of course. <laughs> Can we find one that has a play center? Of course. <laughs> it's in Oklahoma. Oh. I'm drawing the line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. They think they got you, but you still, you still, you, you, you like two steps ahead. Yeah, well, in my, with, with my own children, I was, I was known as Mr. Stricty. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So that when I left to work or if I went to, to give a speech, uh -huh. he's gone. <laughs> Let's party. Yeah. And they were six. Oh, gosh. And they were ready to party. They were. <laughs> and so now Those cabinets just... opened. Yeah. Oh. Those inflatables came out. <laughs> So you just, I, I, I love how you are with your family, your kids, your grandkids, and I want to congratulate you on this memoir that you have out right now. And <laughs> yes, it is. Being here, Henry, Henry the Fonz and Beyond, you have so many stories. As we're going through this book, it's like so many stories on, the, on your path. Yes. Did you, were you afraid that all your stories would not fit in one book? You know what, there are stories I forgot to put in. Really? I called the publisher and I said, oh, can I put it in? They said, you know what, the, uh, the paperback is coming out. So you, you we'll put, put it, it in there. Yeah, and you can put it in the Audible as well. Uh, the do. Audible. The Audible literally was the hardest thing I ever did in my career. What? Because I cannot, I'm so dyslexic, uh. I, I can't read very well. Okay. So, you know, the, um, most people uh, take like two days to read a novel. Yeah. You know? They allotted me 100 hours. To do it. Yeah. To, but that's to get it right, and so we get the full extent oh, and of your I, story. Oh, and did I have to go back and start again, go back and start again? But this is gonna be beautiful. See, I don't read, I don't do a lot of reading. I like the audible. Oh, no so I kidding. feel like you're gonna give me something that I'm not getting also, you know, some Well, extra I, you stuff. know what, I tried, I, I, I found myself rewriting it yeah. as I did the audible. Yeah. I thought, well, you know what, this could be better. Uh huh. And the director said, excuse me, you must go with the text. Uh, because some people listen and follow the book. That's right. Uh, as they go along. Well, this one I wanna read because you have such a life Henry Winkler, and you, and I just remember, it was like, that was a must see, was Happy Days. When I would watch you on Happy Days. This, it was like, hey, that's the, you, you know, it was, 
you walked in the room and it was like applause break every time you walked in the room. And you write in your memoir about being in the Fonz. Yes. What was the audition like? Okay, so the audition, first of all, I, I'm always nervous. I, and I, I, so I walk into this room and there are hundreds of young men, yeah. all of whom I have seen on television. Okay. And me. Wow. Hi. Wow, you look famous even sitting down. You look so <laughs> famous. Okay, so now I am sweating. I am, I have hair down to my shoulders. Yeah. Okay, and it's my, they call my name. I walk in, there is a woman in the far wall in a very big desk, Millie Gussie, the head of Paramount Casting. There are 11 people sitting on the couch. Eddie Milkus and, and uh, 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 Gary Marshall, rest wow. his soul, who became my mentor. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and Tom Miller was right there. And then all of a sudden there's this man and his name is Pasquale. Okay. And he is going to read with me. Yeah. And I'm, I said, you know what, I, I, I just want to say honesty is the best policy. This sweat stain is in direct correlation to the fear that is running through my body. You said that. Okay. And the next thing I said was, and it, it, I'm telling you, I went with my instinct. I don't know where it came from. Pasquale said, are you ready? Okay. Kind. Yes. Being thoughtful. I turned to him and I said, hey, don't you talk to me that way. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You don't look at me right in the eye, all right? <laughs> all right, and then I had six lines. Yes. And I made the decision to make him sit down with those six lines. Yeah. I then threw the script up in the air. I sauntered out of the room. And two weeks later, on my birthday, I get a call from Tom Miller. Would you like to play this part? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> because that could have went, that could have went so south, you throwing the script in there and walking out, swaggering out the I'm room. I'm telling you. Then I had to go back and I auditioned again. They put me in a T-shirt, in a cloth jacket, with a collar that would not stay up. <laughs> and I had a unibrow at that time. Yeah. They removed the unibrow. Uh -huh. Hair by hair. <laughs> and let me tell you, it hurt. <laughs> and then they put my hair in a ducktail. Wow. And I walk back in, and now I'm, I'm, I'm auditioning for the head of uh, ABC, yeah. Barry Diller and Michael, um, Michael Eisner, two men who would then come to Paramount eventually yeah. and take over Paramount. Yeah. And I had to audition again. Did you throw the script in the air? I did not throw the script in the air. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's, it was so memorable, the Fonz. Every yeah. time you were in that room, you just owned that space. And it's, it, the Fonz is so different from you in real life. I think the closest you came to playing yourself was, it was a, a Sanka commercial you wrote about. Exactly. In the memoir, you had a Sanka coffee commercial. Yes. Well, you know what? When I went to the Yale School of Drama. Yeah. And we're, we're trained for the theater. Oh, right. You see. And you, you probably don't do commercials, you see, mm -hmm. because we're trained for the theater. The theater. Uh, <laughs> but I, I made a, a living. I worked in front of a camera. I got, I under, and I got to do plays for free yes. in some church space mm -hmm. that no one ever came to. Yeah. You know, I, I really, I felt like Pence in the drugstore. Yes. Yeah, th nobody was there. <laughs> and uh, then I uh, finally did The Lords of Flatbush. Yes. Uh, with Sly Stallone. <laughs> and went to uh, California. But then you went to California, but you were doing all of this stuff and you were, you were acting because you were from the theater. But it was like the Sanka commercial was when it was, it seemed like it was just you. When I did commercials, I only did slices of life. Okay. I only did um, stuff that were like telling little stories. Okay. And uh, that was one of them. I was on a date and she invited me in for a cup of Sanka, which was a decaf coffee at that time. All right, well, you know what? We found that Sanka commercial. <laughs> so we want to... No, wait a minute. I have not seen this. You have not seen it? Well, I want you to look at this uh, Rambo. I want you to look at Rambo's camera right here, and we're going to roll this Sanka commercial. Let's see what it looks like.
I had a lovely time tonight, Holly. Oh, so did I, Sarah. We should do it again sometime. Oh, well, it's getting late. I, I better be going. Would you like to come in for a cup of coffee? Oh, I'd love to. This is really a nice place, Sarah. Thanks. When everything seems to be going just right, there's nothing worse than a bitter cup of coffee. When we take out the caffeine, we take out a lot of the bitterness. Sarah, why don't you show me around the place? Well, I wouldn't want to wake my folks. Your folks? Anywhere. Don't, I'm not going anywhere. Because I want to talk to I'm you. I'm going to get over that. <laughs> <laughs> Henry is sticking around to chat some more. Keep it right here. <laughs> Henry Winkler and oh. yes and Can I just tell you that yes. you just missed this audience rocking and rolling like you've yeah. never seen it. I know Henry a lot of people think that we manufacture this energy but you can feel it when Oh you you're feel on, it it's Yeah palpable. you feel it I mean, uh, the, uh, can I, what is your name, sir? Me, I'm Marco. Marco just warmed up this audience <laughs> that uh, you literally do not need a sweater <laughs> Oh, my gosh. See, and that's why you have to come back, Henry. We always... I'm... Okay? Is that an invitation? Is that a promise that you'll keep coming back? Okay. See, this is, this is how stuff gets done. If I didn't have to go to Boston... Yes. ...to promote my book, <laughs> because I have no pride, and I need you all to email everybody you know in America. We will do that. We will do that. And we're gonna keep talking about the stories in this book. I loved it. Okay, you're not just an iconic actor, Henry Winkler. You directed Dolly Parton. I did. You directed Dolly Parton in her first TV movie. I did. Okay, my love for Dolly Parton is like up there with you. Like, are you still friends with Dolly Parton? You know what, I, I, we were connected by a man named Sandy Gallen, who unfortunately- Oh, Sandy Gallen He, he died, yes. that's right, he died too soon. But the last time that Stacy and I and Dolly and were together, we were at an Italian restaurant. And I want to tell you, for a woman that size, she could eat. <laughs> I, there was not one dish that came that she didn't try. Oh, my God. And she is a brilliant woman. Yes. I mean, she just knows everything about everything. She, I... Very generous, she is. Oh, my generous and warm. I want to oh. ask you a question about Dolly, because you're still friends with her. Yes. We talked about it, because she says she does things by fax. Like, she, she doesn't answer her phone. She likes you to send a fax. Yeah. You are friends with her. Yes. You think you could fax Dolly? I know you got a fax machine. You know what? You know what? Henry. I want to tell you something. I could fax her. Okay. I really could. I know how to do it. Yes. I have no idea how to get in touch with her. I, that's the thing, because she only does faxes. I'm, I'm not kidding. She I'm, or she doesn't want me to be in her life. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying. You, you, you show me how to get. But Dolly, I want to tell you, please. <laughs> you're just. Oh my God. <laughs> Again, okay, this is what I also have to congratulate you on. Your 39th children's book, Detective Duck. Your 39th book. Thank you. Henry. Lynn Oliver and I, now I want to tell you that Lynn Oliver and I have written the 39 books together, so I know what it's like to work with a partner. Yeah. So then I met Jim Kaplan. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I, he, I, I had flown him out to California twice. He uh, sat in my living room. I talked to him for about 70 hours. Yeah. And then together we molded the book and then gave it to my wife, who is uh, my secret weapon. Yes. She edited the book. There were parts of it uh, when I was writing about my parents. It's and she said, you better pull back on that. Oh, it was too much. I, and if, if you think that's too much, uh -huh. you can only imagine what's out. What's out? Well, yeah. I already, you already told me you was naked in front of the mirror, and you know, and you was, you was gonna dance like this. Huh? But that was in my dressing room. That was just, that's not in the book. That's gonna be, <laughs> that's gonna, that's be, gonna be in the soft cover. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those stories I'm gonna bring back. 
my love and respect for you just grows by leaps and bounds. I want to say thank you so much for coming. You have an open invitation to come and back anytime. I will anytime. take it. Okay. You. Well, you know, Henry's children's book, Detective Duck, and his memoir, Being Henry, The Fonz and Beyond, they are in stores right now. Go and get it. <laughs> Up next, the hilarious. Can I, can yes. I just say one thing? Absolutely. Can I just say one thing? If reading is as difficult for you as it is for me, there are also pictures. <laughs> Pictures. I tried to think of everybody. <laughs> no, we love pictures. You can't do this without pictures, Henry. Yep, Henry, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for stopping by. Up oh, next, the hilarious Ophira Eisenberg is in my laugh lounge. Keep it right here. Henry Winkler. <laughs> Jerry will be right back. You know I'm all about funny mamas, which is why I am so excited about my next guest. She's the host of the Parenting is a Joke podcast. Please welcome to my laugh lounge, Ophira Eisenberg. Yeah. Hey. You know what, Ophira, you, I, you, I think you are the first Ophira <laughs> I have ever met. Yeah, I get that all the time. Uh, it's a real name, just so you know. Okay. It's not a made up name. It is a old name though. It is like, really, it's an old, 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 Hebrew name uh -huh. that uh, didn't catch on. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and it's very Israeli, actually. And I have an Israeli friend, and I said, it's not popular here. Right. But it's popular there, right, in Israel? And he went, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Old name. Nobody wants it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was, I'm the Mabel of Jerusalem. Oh, my gosh. So, so like, like, you know, you, you have this. <laughs> now, your, your son, his, his name is Lucas. Yes. All right, so Lucas just turned eight. Did you feel any kind of pressure when you Picked your son's name? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was gonna give him a uh, name not like mine. I wanted it to be easy. Okay. But it's also very intentional because my husband is a huge Star Wars nerd. Okay, so this is good. Yes, and so he loved Lucas. I like the name too, not because of Star Wars. I like the name because before I met my husband, yeah. I dated a lot of guys. Okay, a lot of guys. <laughs> So when I was then pregnant with a boy, I was like, oh my goodness, are there any guys' names left for me <laughs> out there that don't have like a memory attached? <laughs> this is the, the last thing you want is a memory with your son. Yeah, that's okay. right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, okay, now I was talking about Halloween earlier. Yeah. Did your son have fun doing Halloween? You know what, this year was great. This yeah. year was great. He, um, he wanted to dress up as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Okay, good. Okay, so that was very cute. And then he wanted us to do the family group costume. Yeah. So he said to my husband, you're gonna be the, the rat splinter. That's okay. the father yes. figure. And then he said to me that I was gonna be April O'Neil. That's okay. the female character yes. in the cartoon. So easy costume, she wears a yellow jumpsuit, had it. Yes. And then she has a uh, red haircut. Yeah. And so I was like, that's a cheap Halloween wig. But yeah. my son goes, no, you're not buying a wig. You're cutting and dyeing your hair. Oh, I know, I said, no, 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 I'm just gonna wear a wig. And he repeatedly said, no, you're not. You are cutting and dyeing your hair. I know, it was like an overbearing, controlling boyfriend. Okay. That was like, here's how I want you to wear your hair. I was like, no, <laughs> I wear my hair how I like, please. <laughs> yeah. You so was like... arguing with your boyfriend's son. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh my gosh, girl. <laughs> now, and, and I love this, you've been on tour. It's, it's so hard, you were in tour, uh, you're doing your stand-up tour in yes. Canada. Yes, yes. Being away from your family, was that hard, Ophira? So hard, it really is hard, you know? And I thought about it, I felt guilt. I felt a lot of guilt, yeah. you know? As moms, we feel guilt, and mm -hmm. I thought, I'm leaving my family behind, I'm going out on the road, I'm working. I feel, am I a bad mom? I actually thought, yeah. am I a bad mom? And then I thought, no, no, I am a professional, I am out on the road, yes, alone, but I'm working and making money for my family. That's right. Yes, thank you. That's right does not make me a bad mom. It makes me an average dad. <laughs> oh, God. And you know what? I bought him a little trinket at the airport. So number one dad, right here, number one dad. Now, I think I bond with you so much because I had Jeffrey uh, late in life. You became a mom in yes. your 40s. Yep. So is, tell me the perks of getting older. 
Let's see. Okay, one perk happened recently. So I was hungry. I went to a grocery store and you know bought a soup that they yeah. sell. Which is, can I say anything about being in my forties? I bought a soup, everyone. <laughs> and uh, and then I left. I just some. I was in a daze. I walked out of the grocery store. Yeah. Without paying for it, I was a block down the street when I realized what I had done, and I thought, "How did this happen?" <laughs> and then I remembered, women in their forties are invisible to society. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, "Oh okay. gosh, this is great! This <laughs> is great!" You know, carrot ginger soup today, Gucci tomorrow, my friend. Take <laughs> <laughs> an advantage. Ophira, I'm gonna take you out for a we gonna go get a drink yeah, together, me and you. I wanna thank you for being here, Ophira. Oh my goodness. And y'all, to find out when Ophira is performing near you, go to SherryShowTV.com and make sure you subscribe to the Parenting is a Joke podcast. We'll be right back. Ophira Eisenberg. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. It's time for Celebrity Lie Detector. I am here with Sierra from Ohio. All right, hey, Sierra. Hey, so Mrs. Now, Travis. Hey, all right now. Okay, so it is time to guess which one is the lie. So I'm gonna give you the lies and you guess which one. All right, she appeared in an episode of Sesame Street when she was five. She used to catfish people on MySpace. She made history as the youngest talk show host. Which is the lie? And uh, it's Kiki Palmer, I forgot to tell you oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, she appeared. Sesame Street? Sesame Street. The lie is she appeared in an episode of Sesame Street. You yes. got it right. Okay. And guess what? You won two tickets to Madame Tussauds, the world's greatest wax museum Whoa. with over 20 years of history. And we'll be right back. Whoa. Sherry, we'll be right back. Come be part of my studio audience. Go to SherryShowTV.com for free tickets. We'll be right back. Whoa. We'll be right back. Tomorrow, comedian Donnell Rollins. So join us for the best time of daytime. Bye. Yeah.